Welcome back to Module 3. When doctors disagree, where does that leave you and me? Hopefully, it doesn't leave you with a headache, but that's what it leaves a lot of people with. And, you know, it's just one of those things we have to get used to, that uh, there's a lot of disagreement. And where it leaves us is where we should be, and I believe we should each be, we'll take on that responsibility for our health and well-being. Doctors aren't gods. They're people just like you and me, with a little bit of extra knowledge. And sometimes that knowledge is working for them and you, and sometimes it's not. So you need to figure out for yourself and, and relate to medicine from an intelligent perspective of, okay, well, who's saying what and what looks like the best option for me? So it's really about us each taking more responsibility for our health and well-being and not relying on other people. A lot of people still don't even believe that doctors do disagree and one slide I wanted to show you was um, this Australian doctor, Barry Marshall. And it's an interesting story, really, because he, was, he won a Nobel Prize in 2005 for showing that there was a bacteria that caused stomach ulcers and gastritis, you know, inf inflamed stomachs. And that was, he actually rewrote the textbook at that point, but it was a story that actually took 100 years to make because it was 100 years before he proved it that someone was suggesting that ulcers was caused by a bacteria. And then for all those decades, doctors believed, here's that word belief again, doctors believed that, gosh, no bacteria can exist in a stomach, in stomach acid, that thing will rot anything. But what they didn't know was the bacteria actually were able to penetrate the cell and turn off the ability of the stomach wall cell to actually produce acid so then the bacteria could get a hold and the funny story about <laughs> it's not funny it's just just he was really determined to make a point he, he really got a bee in his bonnet about it and he, so he tried to infect a dog uh, with um, this bacterium that he'd found in, in stomachs and it was a pathologist I think that put him onto it and he um, the dog didn't get the back get stomach ulcers and it wasn't till and he said well you know can imagine it can't you he spent all these years doing it trying to get everything together to prove this and the dog is fine and uh, so he says well I'll just have to try it on myself and he gave you know ingested a, a dose of bacteria and sure enough he got he got gastritis and so the funny thing is he didn't, he didn't, they didn't know until that point that dogs aren't susceptible to that bacteria, <laughs> but humans are. But uh, the moral of the story here is that doctors can disagree for decades. This was 100 years. And the whole thing about what we've been taught about diet and nutrition, there has been doctors disagreeing about that from the very beginning where saturated fat was being implicated or, 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 or you know, pointed to as, as the enemy. And, uh, but just not enough of them and they didn't have enough evidence or they just weren't being listened to. And uh, so I just wanted you to know that, just think about this, you know, you and I don't have 100 years, we don't even have 40 years, which a lot of change in medicine takes at least 40 years, at least 30. And so it's up to us, that's where I say when doctors disagree, where does that leave you and me? It's up to us to take more and more responsibility for our health and well-being and get, by getting better educated and that's exactly what I aim to do with this course. You know, there's a massive confusion about what's healthy, and I wanted to take you back to a certain moment in time. 1955, two very, very important things happened. One, I was born, there's me and my mum. And two, President Eisenhower had a heart attack. Now, I promise, swear to God, I had nothing to do, my birth had nothing to do with his heart attack. But I also swear to God that his heart attack had a lot to do with the food choices you make on a daily basis today, 64 years later. And Professor Robert Lustig, you'll hear more about him in a minute, but he's a pediatric endocrinologist. So he understands hormones and he understands that overweight isn't necessarily a calories in, calories out context. It's about the hormones that are affecting how you're, you're, how you're dealing with those calories. And as he says about the education that happened with the food pyramid that came out and all that kind of stuff, he says the goal was to alter our diet for the better. 
Instead, we've laid waste to every nutritional hypothesis, lost the public's trust, and killed countless millions in the process. See, it's not just me that's saying that medicine has just been a disaster in the last 50 years. And he says, we'll be suffering the aftermath of this battle royale for generations to come. Why? I think there's two reasons. One is we're all suffering the effects of that change in diet we were educated to make, taken down the wrong road. And the other thing is it'll take a while for the beliefs to change. Because we've had a generation, 50 years of education saying, you know, fat's bad for you, salt's bad for you. And all those things take a while to percolate through and change. But hopefully this will help you change it faster. And, you know, if you need more information on that, I highly recommend these two books. If this is like, a, these two are like what, who I call the yin and yang of the whole how it went wrong. And Good Calories, Bad Calories by Gary Torbs. You know, which takes the, the male position and The Big Fat Surprise by Nina Teichholz. Two beautiful books and if you really want to understand what really happened, then get into those books and you'll, you won't doubt it at all. It'll mind, it's mind-blowing stuff. But what happens when we're confused and things aren't quite working right? What do we tend to do? We often tend to blame something. Can you imagine what it is? How about your genes? You know, have you ever been saying this statement? Oh, I'm just the way I am because of my genes. Think about that. I know I did. I always struggled with my weight. So it's just my genes. But hey, let's wait up a minute. Here's me. Uh, there was uh, me and my granddad. Uh, he was obviously overweight. He was interesting enough. He was a baker and my dad had left home and we... Um, were brought up by around my granddad's bakery, so I lived in a bakery for the first nine years of my life. Uh, that's me at the age of nine. That was when I started to fatten up. Uh, Mum was very happy with me getting my, I was apparently always a scrawny, sick kid, and then I got my tonsils and adenoids taken out, I think when I was about seven, and then I just started to fatten up, and uh, my mum said, I fattened up like a wee butter bar. And so she was super delighted, <laughs> instead of being a sick kid, I was all of a sudden a healthy, bouncy, fat baby, and they, or fat kid at that point, and they started, because they thought that, that that was healthy. And there's a picture of my mum, I think at the age of 12, uh, you know, they had to put her on a, try and put her on a diet at the age of, um, around about that time, and, you know, it just never worked for her, struggle with weight all her life. And if you're wondering about the other side of the family, here's my, my dad's parents. I never really met them. I left um, before the, the second granddad died. And as I said, the family was estranged. Uh, here's me as um, a young man. I'm the guy in the back. I'd always wanted to have abs and never could see them. And uh, then here's my dad, about the same age as I am now. And uh, I'll look to putting a slide of me in there because I haven't got a recent picture, but I can guarantee you I'm nowhere near as porky as him. So, you know, what happened? Was it, how come I'm different? I didn't end up like my granddad or my mum, who's I'm more her body type, uh, or my dad or his parents. I didn't end up like any of them. Well, the reason is this. You know, there's a, a doctor called David Perlmutter. He's a, a neurologist. And he's, he's made the statement, he's read a book called Grain Brain, which is a fantastic book, and uh, he made the statement, food is a powerful epigenetic modulator, meaning it changes your DNA for better or for worse. And the reason I've got a monarch, caterpillar, and a butterfly up here is that they're exactly the same genes. they just grown up. And what happened is the gene came under the effect of different environmental influences and that transformed the caterpillar into a butterfly. But the same genes reside in both of them. And when you think about it, we used to be like butterflies. We used to grow up, um, get fit and healthy, and go about our lives. But we're actually turned back to like fat cat caterpillars, haven't we? And so we just get lazier and lazier. And that's part of the process I'll talk about of just eating wrong. And just want to sit around and eat all day, just like a caterpillar. So that's what I'm saying is that food, whatever food you eat, can affect your genes and it can affect what's happening in your body. So if you want to blame anything, 
you blame the food you've been eating that made you into a fat caterpillar or a disease state or whatever it is and particularly blame the education that made you eat that way because it wasn't actually your fault or it was actually we were doing what we were told was we needed to do and what someone believed was healthy and what we believed was healthy. It's not our fault, it's not our genes, it's not yours, it's the education you've had.